There's some more stuff we need to know about functions. First of all, in the other videos, to be able to use a function and basically uh, compile your program without getting any compiler errors, we had to create our function in the main uh, .cpp file, in the main source file. We had to create our function, if you remember, uh, before we start using it, because in our main function over here, when we want to call that function, the compiler needs to know already what this function is. So if we would type up what the function is after we start using it, uh, the compiler will start reading our CPP file line by line, and then when it comes over here and sees the func, we don't know what that is, because we're going to we're only going to start knowing what the func is a lot later in the file when we come over here. So therefore I explained that you have to put the the making of the function, you have to put that before the main function, before basically you start using it. So that now, when you start, when the compiler starts reading the file, first off, the compiler will learn what is the func, and now the compiler already knows what it is, so that when we start going into the main function over here, we already know what the func is, and we know how to call it and return from it, etc. So the truth is that actually if you'd like, and as we're going to learn, this is going to be useful when you're going to write up a few different types of files, um, you could put it after the main function, just that before we ever start using that function that we created, basically in our case over here, before we go into the main function, we'll have to declare that such a function exists. So this is how you do it. You type the same thing that you type at the beginning of when you're making that function over here. The same exact thing. Void the func, opening and closing parentheses. But then you don't finish up typing what the whole function is. You just finish off with a semicolon and that's it. So what this over here means, it means that we're telling the compiler uh, for now, all you have to know is that there's such a thing which is called the func, and its return type is void, and that's it. We just want to tell you in advance so that when you get into the main function, you'll know what we, what we mean when we say over here the func. So the compiler will keep that in mind, that at some point we will learn the details about how the func works, but for now it's enough to know that such a thing exists. And later on, once the compiler finished compiling this whole thing over here, in our case, and then it goes further on, now over here the compiler will check up again what is the exact details of the func which we declared before. So this over here is called a declaration. We are declaring that there is such a thing existing which is called the func. And this over here is called a definition. When we actually define what does it mean, what is the details of how this thing works. In C++, as we learned a few times, you can never use something which was nev which doesn't exist yet. You can't start using a variable x if you haven't created it yet. And you can't start using the func if you haven't created it yet either. However, you don't have to give the whole entire definition of what that thing we want to have existent, how does it work. All you have to do is just make a declaration. We just have to declare it and that'll be enough for the compiler for now to know exactly um, that just that it exists and later on the compiler will bump into this and learn the exact details of course if you don't have the definition over here or anywhere else where the compiler will find it uh, you will get a compiler error because we declared that this thing exists and that we're going to give the details later but we didn't give any details later we must have the details of how this thing works so make sure you understand how to make a declaration and how to make a definition. The declaration is just the name, uh, the, sorry, the return type, if it's void or integer or whatever it's going to be. Then we have the name, the opening and closing parentheses, and then instead of the opening and closing brace, all we have is a semicolon and that's it. The definition will have the opening and closing brace with all with the whole entire inside of that function. So make sure you don't put a semicolon over here because that's going to be a compiler error because first of all we've already declared the function over here and this looks like we're declaring it again 
because the semicolon over here will close the deal on whatever you typed over here and it will never be associated with what's happening afterwards over here. Then the compiler will start to try reading this thing over here and won't understand what's going on. What is this? It will never make the connection that this is the body, the inside of this because we put a semicolon over there. So make sure you don't make this type of bug. This is the declaration and this is the definition. And as we'll learn soon, this is going to be very useful. The next thing we're going to learn about is passing variables. Functions would be pretty stupid if you couldn't pass variables to them, which means, as you remember, we learned about the rules of scope and visibility. The world of the main function has nothing but to do with the world of the func over here. So apparently that would mean that I could never really uh, use a function which would help me out in doing stuff with my variables that I have in the main function because this is one world and this is another world but what if one day I need to calculate something with uh, one of my variables over here uh, but I don't want to do it in the main function I want a different function to do all the calculation but I'll never be able to have the real connection with that function because this is one world and this is another world how am I going to get my variable to that function well, this is done very simply by passing the variable to that function. The way this is done is like this. First of all, in the declaration of the function, whether it's done separately or if it's done altogether, you have to, in the parentheses, you have to declare that this function will be bringing over some stuff, some variables with it. Actually, you have to specify exactly what type of variable you hope that this function will pass. And if you'd like, you can give it a name. You don't have to, you could just leave it blank like this, but it could be a little clearer if you add a name in the declaration. So right now you're declaring that this function will be taking in, it will be passing a integer variable when it is called. Now let's go to the definition. The definition must always match the declaration. If something is different, like of if over here it's void and over here it's integer, um, the compiler will think that this is a different function altogether. Everything must match if you want this d definition to be a continuation of this declaration. The type has to match, the, the name has to match, and the amount and types of variables that are going to be passed also has to match. So over here we, has, we, ha we also have to type integer, and over here we must give it a name. It doesn't have to match the name that we gave in the declaration. As we said in the declaration, this is just for clarity, you don't have to have a name over here. But over here you have to have a name. You can give it whatever name you'd like, let's say x, or y, or whatever you'd like it to be. And finally, when you are actually calling the func, since it must take an integer variable along with it, you have to type in over here the variable that you'd like to pass to it. So let's say over here we're going to pass the variable x which we set just before to be 9. So what's happening over here is that we are calling the func and passing to it our variable x which has 9 in it. When we go to the func over here suddenly we have an existing integer which at this point it's called y but in truth it's a mirror image of the variable x that we had over here. So we can finally start passing around variables to different functions and get over a little bit of the teleportation scope problems that happen when you go from one world to another world. So in here we can start using the variable y which actually is a mirror image of this variable x over here again. We could try to print out the variable y right over here and we'll see that it has number 9 and let's see that in action. Here we go number 9. So again, there's the declaration of a function so that we know that it exists. We have the definition which actually must match the declaration by the type of uh, return value, the name, and any type of uh, variable which you're going to be passing into that function. Over here you don't have to have a name, you have to have a semicolon, and in the definition you can have a different name, but that's the name that you're going to be using for the rest of this function and then when you call the actual function you pass into it any variable which you'd like to pass to that function and that will be taken into the function as that integer which you declared. You can pass in as many variables as you'd like make sure to separate them by a comma as well as when you actually call the function separate them by commas 
and make sure you pass in the correct types of variables.